Thank you very much. Okay, now I feel weird. <laughs> that was my final week as a PhD student. But I'm here talking to you now because most of that week looked something like this. This could be a very, very stressful time. I think from yesterday. Yeah, that, that's, that's still happening. The idea of finishing it, almost, it's almost... Let me explain. When you vlog, this is what you normally do. You look into the camera, you touch your hair, you preen, you pout, you do some time lapses, you film yourself working, then you take the card out of your camera, put it in your computer, edit the footage together, and then boom, next day. Here's what you do if you're insanely busy. You vlog your day, you touch your hair, you do some time lapses, and then you just kind of do that day after day after day after day, and then weeks later, when you finally get a spare afternoon, you take the SD card out of your camera, you put it in your computer, and away you go. You're editing. Now, funnily enough, when I was finishing my PhD, I just so happened to be insanely busy, because I was finishing my PhD, and moving out of my home, and I didn't get a chance to take the card out of my camera for about a month. And when I did, well, you heard what the clip sounded like. They were all almost completely unusable. And yes, before some smartass in the audience says this, my microphone was turned on. But something happened, and I think it was in the last vlog, which incidentally, if you haven't seen yet, you should go and check it out, because it involves this insane West Country tradition where people wrestle each other for barrels full of fire. Yeah. Something happened when I was filming that vlog that busted my microphone. And that was part of the footage that I didn't offload for about a month. So I didn't realise this at the time, but something that night broke it. Can't think what it might have been. Fire. But I'm not going to let that stop me from telling this story, because I know that my subscribers have been waiting for this for a long time. Some of you have been watching for years, for this moment. So, it's time to vlog in a different way. So here's the situation at the start of the week. A couple of days before I'd submitted a complete version of my thesis to my main supervisor and over the weekend he had been reading it and annotating it and potentially finding problems with it. On Monday I had what was meant to be my final meeting of the PhD with him to go through those corrections where if we found anything particularly wrong then we had to rethink our plan. I mean the clues in the title, things went pretty much fine after literally looking through my thesis with a magnifying glass, he was happy with where it stood. Apart from one crucial thing. After the meeting I went back to my office to correct the first half of the thesis for grammar and spelling and stupid mistakes that I've made. And that didn't take long at all. But what was a very big problem was something wrong with two of my plots. And before I can explain what was wrong, I first should explain briefly what my thesis is about. Some of you will have heard this before, so I'll keep it quick. Basically, my thesis is in atmospheric physics, and specifically I was looking at the interaction of the middle atmosphere, that's the stratosphere, with the troposphere, the lowest part of the atmosphere that touches the surface. And I derived a new theory which explained, or attempted to explain, observed coupling, actually observed downward influence of the stratosphere on the troposphere. And I did so using a field called PV. There's plenty of details about that in previous vlogs. The key thing for this video is that this theory yielded some predictions, and in particular I was predicting the density of air as you went higher up in the atmosphere, and also the amount of mass that was being moved around, it was being fluxed into and out of the polar region, again as a function of height. Now you'd expect those predictions to look pretty smooth and basically get smaller and smaller as you go higher up in the atmosphere, but the problem was the two key plots uh, in this part of the thesis weren't smooth, they looked like this. Which isn't ideal if you're three days away from submitting.
So on Tuesday, I motored to try and fix this problem. I did the last of the silly corrections in grammar and spelling and re-ran some code. See, the problem was that normally when you do maths in the atmosphere, you use what's called isobaric coordinates. Though these are coordinates where instead of you're considering uh, the stuff that's going on one kilometer up, two kilometers up, three kilometers up, you're considering it at a thousand hectopascals, you know, where the pressure equals a thousand hectopascals, and then 900 hectopascals. 800 hectopascals, and you're, you're working on constant pressure surfaces. That is how data is supplied to you. However, because of the nature of my thesis, I wasn't interested in that. I was interested in doing stuff on height coordinates, so one kilometer, two kilometers, three kilometers. And I hypothesized, the, and I really had to bet that this was correct, I hypothesized that the problem with these plots was that they were taking the data on pressure coordinates and then not converting it correctly to height coordinates. And like I said, I had to really hope that this was correct because uh, I had to do something the following week that brought me out of Exeter. More on that later. So if I didn't submit this week, I was probably gonna have to file for an extension for my thesis because I would have needed a lot more time to fix the problem. So I was very stressed out that morning, so stressed out that I did what I normally do, which is go get a Coke Zero and eat some sugar. Now this did help, but at the end of the day, I was still basically helpless. I had to set something running that was gonna take about 12 hours to do. Uh, and I had basically just to wait and come in the next day and see if my hunch was correct. And if so, hunky-dory. If not, world of pain. Now I had done a test run over a smaller little subset of the data rather than the whole 30 years. I think it was like a month, which was promising. So I had a small amount of confidence that I was gonna be okay. And so I took a somewhat ballsy step in retrospect to fill out the paperwork that was gonna go with my thesis if I submitted it. And then... I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet. A pawn and a king I've been up and down and over and out And I know one thing Fortunately, I was correct, and I came in the following day and the plots went from looking like this to looking like this. And then a subsequent plot went from looking like this to looking like this, which was much nicer and I was quite relieved about this. And with that, I had a thesis which had gone through the ringer of both supervisors. They both signed off on the scientific content on how I'd written it up. So I just had to do one last check going through. Incidentally, unbelievably nerve wracking. Sort of saying, yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. That's what's gonna go to my examiners. Yep, yeah, okay, that's good. I can't do any better than that. Like, that was, that was kind of uh, nerve wracking. And then it was time to put it on a memory stick and take it to the printers. So I had to get two copies done for the Viva. I had to get one for each of my examiners. I probably should have done three so I could have one because I actually just printed one out myself subsequently, but it was gonna take a long time to print. There was like 250 pages to print and then two copies to bind. So that was gonna take overnight. So I, at that point, felt like I left an atomic bomb in the print shop and I was gonna go home, slightly freaking out, um, and not really sure how to feel. <sighs> Still not sure how I feel about it now. But I was excited to go home because I was going to be doing something that I'd been itching to do for months. This isn't just any beer, by the way. This is a thesis beer, specifically. The rule of the thesis beer is you don't shave it till you hand it.
I can't begin to tell you how happy I was to get that thing off my face. I actually say as much in this almost completely silent clip. Thanks, microphone. Although some of the styles that I passed through on the way, yeah, kind of wish the video wasn't working either. Then after that truly momentous occasion, I did what my reflex is to do in basically any situation. I went to my room and I edited. Because what else am I going to do, you know? Although coincidentally, that night was the office Christmas party, uh, which is miles from Christmas. But I guess these places get booked up soon. So I took my clean face out on, it, on its debut to this uh, nice restaurant where I actually got to sit amongst all these researchers and feel like an equal. Like I was like, yeah, I've done what all of you postdocs and the professors have done. I finally feel like I kind of belong academically, like I've gone through the fire. I mean, I haven't quite finished yet, again, more on that later, but I felt like I was part of the club now. I mean, there was still one kind of important thing I had to do. So my friend Imogen, bless her, uh, had agreed to film for the vlog. Um, she didn't know the microphone wasn't working, so I'm sorry Imogen, your, your excellent camera handling skills are criminally wasted. But she went above and beyond that, she got me a cake with candles in it and everything, and was generally just like there to push me over the line, just in case I had second thoughts about like stopping being a student anymore. She was there like, no, nope, you're done. We picked up the two copies from the printers. I almost in a completely token gesture because it was fixed at this point, checked them through just to see if there were any mistakes, like if everything was rendered properly. And then I signed my life away and finalized what I was gonna be submitting. But I wasn't submitting just yet because I only get to do this once. So I did a stupid little photo shoot there's like a bit of campus where everybody gets their um, photos taken for graduation. So naturally, I had to do some pictures there. I had to put something on social media. I've wanted to do this for years. <laughs> right. <Ugh. laughs> Ugh. Ugh. This is less comfortable <laughs> than it looks. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ow, my hip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I handed in. I mean, those are... And then I handed in. Those are five words that I have been waiting to say on this vlog. For so long. I have to admit, I was pretty nervous because, you know what, I hadn't done this before. So, I, did, I wanted to make sure I was doing it right. And... Suddenly there was this moment when I walked away from the desk and I had like a little receipt saying, you know, we've got your thesis, that's all good. And there was this moment when I was like, it's, it's actually done. I don't know what I feel like, Imogen. This is really weird. What do you want to do now, Simon? I don't know. Are you going to go and do some shots? I should probably do some shots, shouldn't I? I mean, I don't think should is necessarily... Um... I think I have to do some <laughs> shots, Imogen. I want to sit and play Warhammer. I do want to see my girlfriend. I want to see your girlfriend too. Wait, okay. <laughs> then after submitting, I had to go to the office because I wanted to say to everybody, you know, I, I did it, I finally submitted, and um, had to take part in a little office tradition that's been going on for a while where anybody that submits a paper that gets like a successful submission through into an academic journal we have a little bottle of vodka in the uh, in the office and because the thesis is worth more than a paper i had to do two shots of vodka <laughs> at like 10 a.m so that was a fun walk home from campus. And then much as I wish I could tell you that I then had this glitzy, glamorous uh, afternoon where I was like, yeah, I'm a rock star. I, I finally submitted my thesis. I walked home, I called my mum and dad because I loved them very much and I knew they wanted to hear. And I called my girlfriend and I went home and had a pizza. Not rock star. 
but oh boy did that feel good. <laughs> and then after that I edited because of course I would. I mean if you've watched any of my vlogs you know me by now. I had the last of the ready meals that I bought in preparation for the final stretch of my thesis just I guess for old time's sake. I had the time I was like I don't know I just felt like one. I also picked up my physical copy of the Chapel Choir CD which I designed as you saw uh, a couple of vlogs ago which I was very pleased with. And then I packed because I was going off to Cambridge the following day. Um, well, you hear about that in a second, because between me packing and me going, um, I may have gone out for a few drinks with, with Chapel Choir friends, but unfortunately I, um, I didn't even try and vlog that. The morning after though, For some reason I don't remember doing very much on that day. I basically just dragged myself to the train station and got on a train to Cambridge to see Pixel Girl for the first time since submitting. And her house is very, very noisy dog. And for readers of the Wikicast, the house is wonderful cat. And then I spent what I would think is a well-deserved chill weekend not doing very much at all. I don't actually think I've shown Cambridge in the vlog before. Um, obviously going to Oxford, there's my degree there. Obviously there's a certain amount of enmity towards Cambridge, but you know, as a city I guess it's, it's all right. I did make use of the excellent bookshop Heifers in Cambridge though, although the last time I was in there I impulse bought like four or five books, so I literally had to restrain myself as I helped Pixel Girl get a book. And then when we went around the university shop, because actually maybe you don't know, for those of you who didn't go to Oxford or Cambridge, you get um, stash, that is things like jumpers and scarves and things like that, that are specific to your college, not just the university. Um, so we went to get Pixel Girl's one, um, she's at Homerton College, so uh, we went to the shop and unfortunately I didn't have anything that was right for Homerton, but I did get to meet one of you you guys, uh, a subscriber was there who kind of came up and was like, apologetically, I'm sorry I went to Cambridge. And I was like, well, no, I was, no, it was chill. It was lovely, lovely to meet you. And then speaking of Homerton, we went there and did some work and I was basically catching up on being a human being again because right up until the moment when I was submitting, I was just so laser focused on getting this thesis done that I, I wasn't paying attention to anything else. So emails had piled up and also things like Facebook messages and messages from friends being like, did you die? And I had to be like, oh God, this is two months old. I'm so, so sorry. Um, so I was, I was basically catching up on, on, yeah, being a human being whilst Pixel Girl actually did, you know, her proper coursework before On Sunday, we went and got pho, pho, not quite sure how you're to pronounce it, the Vietnamese noodle soup. Gotta say, this place in Cambridge, absolutely ace. So not a paid endorsement or anything, but if you're in Cambridge, it's pretty good. It's pho, it's on, what street are we on? I don't know. Um, ooh, Wheeler Street. What? Wiener Street? <laughs> Wiener Street. Oh, we're on Wiener... Oh, wait, I'm not done with you yet. We're no, on Wiener no Street. No one actually wants to see your face, Simon. <laughs> and then after that, we basically wandered around Cambridge for a bit and did some shopping. And, I mean, I did warn you, we didn't do very much. And went back to Homerton again before I got a very late bus to Heathrow Airport. Because, as I mentioned earlier, I had to leave Exeter because I'd been bought a plane ticket to go to New York for a week by YouTube. But that's a story for the next vlog, which unfortunately also has this audio problem, but I think is sufficiently interesting that you're gonna wanna tune in for that. But before I go, I do wanna say a couple of things. One, to everyone who's saying, oh, so you're a doctor now. <laughs> Not yet. I still have to do my Viva, which is my final boss of education. I have to defend my research in uh, an exam that can last... I mean, there isn't actually an upper time limit. It could take all day. Uh, it's probably gonna be a couple of hours of me sat in a room with my thesis and talking to two world-leading academics about what I've been up to and trying to justify that it's worth giving me the title of doctor. So, not a doctor yet. Two, thank you 
to everyone who's been watching this vlog. Um, over the past year, actually a bit more than a year now, uh, I have been incredibly lucky to have an engaged audience that I, I just know has been behind me 100%. Like, if I'm having a tough time, you've always been there to lift me up and keep my motivation going. Um, I know that a lot of you in the comments say that I motivate you with my, my work ethic or whatever. You guys motivate me to keep working. Uh, knowing that I have you as, like, as... <sighs> so cliche, but, like, as a YouTube family, you know? Like, I feel like you've got my back. Um, and sharing in all the victories, like, when I fix my code. And, you know, yeah, helping me when things are, are tough. Uh, you guys really, really helped me over the past year and a bit. So thank you to those of you who have been watching. And also thank you to those of you who have been watching for even longer. Some of you have been watching since I was at Oxford as an undergrad. Um, I recognise your names in the comments, I really do. And I appreciate so much the fact that you've got invested in this and this this journey that I've gone on. So thank you for for being there for me. Three, a special shout out has to go to Pixel Girl because she's been wonderful and she's gonna kill me for putting this in the video. But yeah, she's great. I wouldn't have been able to do this without her in particular. Um, yeah, I love you. And then lastly, four, thank you for watching. I realize this has been a somewhat unconventional vlog. It's not exactly like everything else in the series, but as I said at the start, you guys have been waiting for this for as long as I have nearly. So, um, I had to tell this story. So thank you for watching the video and for putting up with this kind of weird setup. Um, if you did enjoy it, give it a like, comment below. Uh, if you'd like to see more like this, hit the subscribe button because as I mentioned in a previous video, I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos now. I'm gonna be trying to do two a week. So, oh, that's a lot of work. I thought a PhD was tough. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. We did it. I'm gonna roll myself up in a big ball and